A continuación presentamos el devocional diario traducido al inglés. En español lo puede encontrar de lunes a viernes a las 9 horas en las Islas Canarias por el canal de YouTube. Centro Evangélico Vida Nueva. Dejamos más información abajo en la descripción del vídeo. Good morning, my dear brethren and friends. Good morning. Uh, welcome us every morning from Monday to Friday to our daily devotional. Today we're going to be going to the uh, letter of Paul to the Romans, specifically chapter 13, verses 6 and 7. And the word of the Lord says the following. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, t their due taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whose customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Chapter 12 and 13 of the letter of Romans There we can find a huge, a very interesting list about what we call the Christian duties. Things, practical things that every believer and every child of God has to practice frequently in their life in order to grow, in order to develop the, himself as a good believer, as a good child of God. Some people live in the theory permanently. Others live permanently in the world of the good intentions, but they never go down to the reality, to the reality of and the practice. And as I said, Romans chapter 12 and 13 is telling us how to live a practical Christian life, a Christian life that pleases and glorifies the name of our Lord. In these two texts, we find some duties of the believers to pay everyone what you owe, But if you have noticed, not everything consists in money. It is true that, for example, it says to whom tribute is due, to whom taxes is, is due, and we're talking about economic issues, but it's also mentioning something very interesting that cannot be paid with money or good intentions. He's speaking, for example, respect and honor. And some people forget that in life, Not everything is acquired or bought with money, but when a person has to be respected or honored for their position, for their age, or for any other reason, and they're not given the honor and the respect they deserve, it is also contracted a debt. And many people don't understand this. Many people think that when the Bible talks about taxes and tributes, there is what it stops, but that's not true. The Bible speaks uh, that There are people who must be honored a different, in a different way than others. I repeat, maybe because of their age, as the Bible says that in front of the person with gray hair, the elderly people have to stand up and greet them properly. And that is also biblical as paying taxes to the state or the government. The respect, the honor is something practical that must be taught to the person because some do not know that it is also a way of pleasing God, honoring those who deserve honor and respecting those who deserve respect. There are some people that are not aware and they don't want to be aware of, or if they are, they don't want to put it in practice. But the Bible says that we do not have to owe anyone anything. If you owe money to somebody, then you have to pay that as soon as possible. If you haven't paid the, the, the taxes, that are due to you, then you have to do that as soon as possible. But if you're not respecting and honoring, perhaps with your attitude and your silence and your indifference, that honor and that respect that that certain people deserve, then you also have contracted a debt. And the Bible teaches us that when we pay, we rest. When we pay and we do our part, then, then the Lord will bless us He, he will prosper us and He will honor us. And I wonder, isn't it possible that some people are always full of debts that do not finish raising their head, that they're always bad because they do not put in practice this that precisely I'm sharing with all of you this morning? Isn't it possible that there are always people that are bad, weak, sick, because they're not doing the part that belongs to them? Ask yourself, analyze, and um, test yourself this day and discover 
with the help of the Lord and with the help, word of God in your hand, what is the part that it belongs to us to do that we're not doing? It may be that it is another, uh, that you're good at any areas that you're praying and reading the word, that you're doing some service in your congregation, but maybe be careful what we do It does have to, doesn't have to be a justification for forgetting other areas of your life with which you have to comply and things that we have to do that are as important or more important than the ones that we have done or we're doing. My dear brethren, do not become a debtor. Do not owe absolutely anything to anyone. Keep your conscience clear and do not get angry when they call your attention because they're believers. And I'm talking about believers that when they taught, they're taught a principle that they're not accustomed to, when they're corrected and when they're exhorted, they get angry, they become depressed, they become sad. However, the Bible says that if we do good, we don't have to be afraid of anyone or anything and be sad or not even share our disappointment, our wound and with people that have nothing to do with the area that we personally have to put in practice in our lives. This is something so important as anything else that you can tell me about the Christian life. There are believers who owe a lot to many people, and I'm not talking about money necessarily. There are believers who have not forgiven others. There's people that are, have not honored others like they should have done, or they don't expect the respect that the Lord is expecting you to express at this point in your life, where theoretically, after so much time in the Lord, you should already be teachers and teach these things to others. As the letter to the Hebrews said, you still have need of milk and not of solid food. There are things that in Christian life that some do not understand and put in practice in their lives. And I believe that it would be good and convenient and tremendously necessary that certain obstacles that we, without having put ourselves in, we are eliminating them. We start removing them, paving the way, so that in this way we prepare the environment to be blessed. We must prepare an ideal environment, an adequate environment, so that your home, so that your economy, so that all the areas of your life are under the blessing of the Lord. And this area of not owing anything to anyone, to whom tribute, tribute, tax, tax, to whom honor, honor, to whom respect, respect, I repeat, is as essential and important as any other area of the Christian life, with perhaps it may be that you're already fulfilling. Live a complete life in Christ. Do not be a good person in some areas and very bad in others. Do not pass certain subjects of the Christian life I refer with a, 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 an outstanding and then in another areas you're failing. Things that could have been brought a benefit and could have brought you a spiritual contribution to your life at this point in time. I repeat, analyze your life. Let's put in practice before the presence of the Lord and take off our mask and ask ourselves and to examine ourselves and see and try to discover with the help of the Lord in what areas of my life I need to improve, in what areas I need to reinforce, what aspects of my Christian life I'm not putting in practice. And that is preventing my growth and my spiritual development. Ask yourself, who do you have to respect more and show that you respect? Ask yourself who you have to honor and show him that honor. Ask yourself all of these things and for sure, in the light of the word of God and in his presence, come without talking to anyone and consulting with anyone, you alone with God, I am sure that you will discover things in your life that need to be improved aspects of your life that we have to enhance so that this that way the enemy does not have you tied in one area and you are in one hand very happy and very well used 
but in other areas, you are an authentic disaster and a bad example and a point of reference for other brothers and sisters. And especially those who have children, remember that we not only transmit our genetics, but also we tr transmit our Christian life, our spirit, our spiritual life. We also transfer them to them and we teach it to our children, to our grandchildren. May they be better Christians than what we are now. May they can see in us what they have to do in, our li in their lives so that their lives will be blessed lives and used by the Lord. We are not living hermetic, hermetic and, and Christian lives with our backs to a reality. We live Christian lives that are open and we're naked and He examines us and tests us And when a word comes of our, to our life, don't get angry. When an exhortation comes to your life, do not get angry. Do not criticize. Do not reject it. Accept it and say, thank you, Lord, for this exhortation. Thank you for this word. Do you know what the Lord said to Cain? If you would do things well, you wouldn't have to have your countenance, uh, such an appearance that is not correct. Why have your countenance fallen, Cain? Because you have not done things correctly. The Lord did not speak to Abel. Abel was doing things right. He did not need to listen to the voice of God that way because he knew what he had to do and he was doing that. To whom the, the Lord spoke? To the one who was doing things incorrectly. He was offering, but not the right thing. He was approaching God his own way. And today there are many people that Let, if I may say that, like Cain, they offer things, they do things for the Lord. But when you look at their faces, when you observe their, their eyes, you notice that his countenance has fallen. Because when someone comes to you in the name of the Lord with a word, with an exhortation, and they, you don't want to receive it, and you don't give glory and thanks to the Lord for that exhortation and that word, Your countenance changes, your countenance falls, and that is noticeable, even if you, nobody tells you anything, but it is noticed. Don't let sadness, pain, the bitterness will take a hold of your heart, but give thanks to the Lord and, Lord, and say, Lord, if you have to exhort me, do so. Or what do you think, that the Lord no longer has any exhortation, nothing to correct us in our lives? My dear brethren, we are in diapers. We still have a long way to go, and we urgently need to grow, mature, and strengthen ourselves in the Lord. It is of no use to spend the whole life in the church if you're not internalizing and manifesting in your Christian life, in your practical life, the things that you say you know. Put them into practice. Do not live, as I say, in the world of theory, of the good intentions, of the plans and projects, but put in practice the word of the Lord, and then your countenance will not decline, but you will have a good attitude in the services, with a good attitude in the family, with a good attitude everywhere you go. And that is going to bring you progress, development, and spiritual growth to your life. If you do not put in practice the exhortation that God is bringing to your life, let me say, you're going to be backwards like a crab. You're going to stagnate. You are going to be a theoretical Christian. You will do some things, but they will not have the support and favor of God because there is an area of your life that is living. The, the blessing is living. A blessing that the enemy is stealing from you that is yours and he wants you, the Lord wants you to have. But sometimes a bad attitude ruins everything that we do or any other aspect of our lives. May the Lord help us this day to reflect on this to the one that is owed taxes, to the one respect, to the one tribute, and to the one honor, honor. Four things that are mentioned in those verses. Do not comply with one or two or three. Comply with all of them so that all the blessing of God come upon your life. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you because your word speaks and very clearly. Your word is a sword that penetrates and cuts. Your word is a mirror that illuminates the dark areas of our lives. Your word, Lord, is the bread that feeds our soul, is the hammer that hits the rock. Your word is that sword, Lord, that penetrates and cuts everything that has to be removed and torn away definitely from our lives. Keep us 
from all danger and all evil. And above all things, we ask you, Lord, earnestly help us to put in practice all the word, all of the advice of God. Thank you, Lord, for the patience, for the opportunities that you give us every day to change, to grow, to mature. And we put our lives in your hands and we ask everything in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, my dear brethren, may the Lord bless you very richly. May you have a day full of blessing. Here we have the daily devotional book of this year in which we have some blank lines to be completed according to the instruction, according to what we have learned today. Let's meditate on this text. And also remember that my daily devotional for next year is also on in Amazon. And you can buy that and continue next year every day from Monday to Friday with a devotional always starting with the Lord. Another thing before I leave, on our web page, mividanueva.org, we have already published the places, the dates, the dates, everything where we're going to be next year in the United States preaching the word, carrying out different events. You have to be in, uh, registered to certain events because the uh, the seats are limited. So go into our web page, mividanueva.org, and there you will find all of the information about where we're going to be in Tampa, Orlando, Miami, San Francisco, Las Vegas, and other places at San Antonio, Texas, which is the first time that we're going to be visiting this town next year. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren. We continue in prayer, supporting each other, covering each other's back, and praying and trusting that in the month of November, if Lord allows, and I believe that will be so, we will be able to travel again with three groups to Israel throughout the month of November. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for supporting us. We continue advancing.